And perhaps this amazing video that went viral says it best about the parent struggle. So here is one Israeli, Israeli mother's meltdown for every mother. די חבר'ה, מורים, תנמיכו, תנמיכו ציפיות, זה לא הגיוני. וכל היום, איך הילד מרגיש? איך שיצייר ציור? איך הילד מרגיש? הוא כל היום בפלאפון, טוב לו! ישנים טוב, אוכלים, לא מפסיקים לאכול. איך הוא מרגיש? שאלו אותי איך אני מרגישה. It still makes me laugh, and I'm sure there are many, many parents who can identify with that. Now, remote learning pioneer Sal Khan is stepping up to help stressed parents. His Khan Academy is publishing schedules and learning plans for kids while providing support to parents and teachers. Sal Khan, are you there? Yeah, great to be here. Good to... Good to see you. Oh, I can't really see you because we're social distancing. But do you identify at all with that mother who totally melted down? There have been moments in my household over the last few weeks that, that, <laughs> that definitely parallel. I have three young children, uh, 11, 8, and 5. And I think the 5-year-old in particular has uh, sometimes caused, caused a little bit of strain for us. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can imagine what a strain it is, not just on parents' nerves, but for kids' education, for their, sometimes their, you know, their nutrition at school. I mean, UNESCO says a billion students, kids and all the way up uh, to college, are out of school right now. What does that mean for education, first and foremost? I mean, when you think about that, what does that mean for these kids, for society? Well, you know, we've always known about things like summer learning loss that uh, for most of the world, there's three months off in summer. And not only do kids not learn in that three months, but they forget in those three months. And there's you know, things like the summer slide. It's well documented. Now we're in a situation where it's likely that these closures will continue through the end of the school year. And then you have summer. So you're going to have five months of not learning and also probably forgetting. And some of our assessment partners, the NWEA recently released a study showing that it's indicative that the average kid might lose a year of learning if they're not able to engage in some way, shape, or form. And the real tragedy of it is that's the average student, but a lot of students who don't have forms of access, they might fall further behind while other kids might be able to keep up. Because the theme really of this program has been the disparity and the inequality gap. So we've seen it in terms of who the disease is, 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 is hurting most. And you just heard the congresswoman from California about the inequality of who's going to get the best equipment and the testing and all the rest of it. And also in education around the world. You're just speaking to that right now. So what happens then? I know the, the Khan Academy is, is, is stepping up to try to, you know, to try to mitigate some of this. But when kids or parents don't have the tools that it takes to remote learn, whether it's the internet connection or the actual computers, what happens? Yeah, this is a huge issue that we've been trying to work with partners on for the last 10 years. Obviously, us as a not-for-profit, we've had this mission statement for some time of free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. We always imagined that we could be used in physical classrooms to help teachers personalize, let students fill in the gaps, give teachers better information. But we also imagined this use case around the world that we've seen where Khan Academy is used in places where kids don't have access to school or they don't have access to extra supports. But it's all predicated on having some form of internet access. We work on even a, a fairly simple smartphone, but you at least need that. And so we're trying to work with telecom carriers, school districts, whoever we can find to help solve this. We're starting to see, you know, it, it, this has been a surprise for everybody. It's happened very, very fast. I was talking to the superintendent in Clark County, which is Las Vegas. They're the fifth largest school district in America. They've done some pretty heroic efforts of getting laptops uh, to, at first, their older students, and then they recently got a shipment of 40,000 Chromebooks to give to their other students. They're working with the local telecom carriers, the cable companies, Cox, to be able to uh, get the hotspots out there. So that's the type of thing that we need to see more of, not just in the U.S., but throughout the world. And what are you doing, the Khan Academy? I mean, already you, I mean, you do remote learning and mentoring, but I, I, I'm sure that your subscriptions or, or people trying to get your services have skyrocketed. What are you doing to help them? What subjects, what schedules, what advice? Yeah, when we started, we started to realize that something was going on about six weeks ago. We saw our Asia traffic pick up and we started getting letters from teachers in South Korea saying how they were using Khan Academy during school closures. And then when it started to become clear it was happening in the US, we 
it's one of those moments where you kind of look right, look left, and you're like, I guess this is us. We have to help. We have to step up. It's our duty to step up uh, as we go through these closures. And so over the last decade, we've built, and everything I'm talking about is free. It's non-commercial. We're supported with philanthropic donations from uh, folks all around the world. Uh, we have Khan Academy Kids. You can see Cody Bear right behind me. It's a free app. It starts as, as early as ages two or three, goes through the first grade standards. That covers math, reading, writing, social, emotional learning. Then uh, the, I guess you should say the core Khan Academy uh, math goes all the way through elementary, middle, and high school, and even early college. Uh, we have we just launched some English and language arts. We're the official practice partner with the College Board around the SAT. We also have your physics, chemistry, biology, economics, things like that. And so we've always had that in place. And so what we realized is a lot of parents and teachers and students were being told, well, there's a lot of stuff on the internet. Here's 500 resources you might use. But that was really overwhelming for everyone. So we said, we have to put more supports in place. We published schedules for students of different age groups, just so that parents and teachers could understand what a day could look like. And we've gotten a lot of feedback that that de-stressed them a lot. We've made it very clear that Parents shouldn't beat up on themselves right now. As you just talked about, there's a lot of stresses going on, especially for, let's say, single parents. Uh, the first thing is take care of yourself. Uh, we have a few weeks to get this going. And if your students can even do two hours a day, uh, that's a lot. If they can get that core math, get that core reading and writing, and then anything that you can layer on top of that is great. And then we've been doing webinars for parents and teachers so that they can understand uh, how all of this works. And we're also trying to do more supports for students. So you said layering on top of the core uh, issues. And, and one of the things that you recommend is to go out with your kids, take a walk, have a look at whatever, animal, wildlife, plants, and this and that. Tell me, I mean, that's not just, I guess, well, maybe it's a de-stressor, but it's also a different level of knowledge and education, right? Yeah, you know, there's a silver lining here, which is, you know, the, the schedules we put out, they're not just about learning the math or your reading comprehension or the science. We were very careful to put, spaces in there so students could take breaks, they can uh, go outside, get a little bit of physical exercise, and also have a lot of time in the afternoons and evenings where they can explore. Uh, ideally, it is exactly the type of thing that you just described, have an interesting conversation, uh, work on a project of some kind. Uh, but you know, sometimes creativity can be a byproduct of having time on your hands. And we think that this, that could be an opportunity for a lot of students and families. So we know, uh, or maybe to tell us, I mean, we know that there are some students who excel at online and remote learning, and then there are others who may be really good students in the classroom but can't really cope with the remote um, part of that. You know, and then do you think that this could have a, a positive or a, a kind of a difficult legacy, this? Because... Even, I mean, I'm looking at the studies and reading the research, even with the most trained teachers, with the best technology, the best setups, many, many sources have said that, you know, constant home homeschooling or remote, you know, primary schooling has delivered sort of lackluster results. I wonder what your take on that is. Yeah, so I think there's a, a couple of issues going on. You know, in the short term, this is clearly a suboptimal situation, especially for younger kids. Uh, they need that socialization. They need that great teacher to help unblock them, to mentor them. But if we view it as kind of a glass half full or glass quarter full uh, type of situation, that skill that you just talked about, that metacognitive skill of being able to self-direct, uh, have a to-do list, have a schedule, and be able to check that off, in some ways, that is a more powerful skill than any of the academic skills. I'm someone who's obviously made a lot of content in, in a lot of areas, but for my own children, more than knowing how to factor a quadratic, I want them to have that skill of self-regulation. What are my goals? How can I work through that in a, in, a, in a given day? And so this crisis is putting pressure on students for sure to do more of that. So my hope is it puts more of an emphasis generally in the school system on that kind of uh, self, that, that a little bit more independence because in, in the 21st century, once kids are out of school, it's not like 50 years ago where you're out of school and you work in the same job and then you collect a pension. Uh, they're going to have to continue to learn uh, sometimes in, in these types of modalities. With that said, as you, there's a lot of kids who need more supports. And that's why we're trying to do whatever we can. You know, Before this crisis, Khan Academy was being used by about 19 million students a month. Uh, we've, in the last few weeks, seen our traffic be around two and a half to three X of what it typically is. We're seeing registrations from parents and uh, teachers are wow. sixfold, students are sixfold. And so we realize that we are, we, we have to make sure that all of those kids and even the kids who haven't got, come on yet feel supported. 
And it's not going to be a perfect solution right now, but we're trying to work with as many partners as possible to, to give them those supports.